Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about an application of ultrasound, and that's what's called phonophoresis. So what is phonophoresis? Phonophoresis is a technique that uses therapeutic ultrasound. It's just an extension of it. It uses the ultrasound waves really in the same way we talked about in the previous video, but we're using it to drive a medication transdermally through the skin and drive it to a particular tissue. So it's really the same thing as iontophoresis, except instead of using electrical currents to drive the drug through, we're using ultrasound waves to drive the drug through. So again, we've got all these parameters over here. That's what we're going to talk about first, and then we'll actually talk about how you set up the phonophoresis treatment. So what's the indication for phonophoresis? Well, it's inflammation. These are conditions that phonophoresis has been shown to be effective at treating. So these are inflammatory conditions. So what's our goal? Our goal is to reduce that inflammation and also to drive a medication transdermally across the skin. And that drug is what's going to be anti-inflammatory. It's going to go to a specific tissue and reduce the inflammation there. For phonophoresis, we use ultrasound. And for ultrasound, we have two options. We can either use thermal parameters or non-thermal parameters. For phonophoresis, we never use thermal parameters, which means we never use a continuous or 100% duty cycle. Okay? This actually impairs the drug transport across the skin and through the membranes there, and so it will prevent that drug from actually getting to the target tissue. So never use a thermal cycle on phonophoresis. We always use the non-thermal cycle on phonophoresis. Remember, that's a 20% duty cycle. I go into this in more detail in the ultrasound video, but a duty cycle has to do with what percentage of the time that you're using this machine right here is this device actually emitting ultrasound waves. So if it's a 100% duty cycle, it's 100% of the time that it's on emitting those uh, ultrasound waves. And remember, those ultrasound waves cause vibrations in these tissues. Well, with 100% of the time it's producing ultrasound waves, there's going to be a lot of vibrations. And those vibrations are going to be enough to produce heat. So the tissues are going to heat up. That's why we have thermal effects. So with a 20% duty cycle, this is non-thermal because this machine would only be emitting ultrasound waves 20% of the time. That's not enough time to really get significant vibrations here, enough vibrations that is to heat up the tissues. So it's non-thermal. That's how we're going to promote phonophoresis with a 20% duty cycle. So let's first go down right here. So the frequency for phonophoresis is going to be 3 megahertz. Now remember, some machines will automatically be at 3.3. It'll either be 1 megahertz or 3.3. Um, use 3 or 3.3. Okay, It doesn't make that much of a difference, whichever one you have on your machine. That's your frequency. Your intensity is going to be between 0.5 and 1.0 watts per square centimeter. Again, with intensity, remember, we typically want to start out at the lower value and see what the patient can tolerate. If they have good tolerance, we can always increase that intensity to 1.0, but we don't want to exceed that. And then the treatment duration is going to be 5 to 10 minutes. And this 2 times ERA, we talk about this in the ultrasound video. I'll briefly talk about it when we get to the next slide. That's typically what we're going to be using for phonophoresis. However, we can also use this other set of parameters, which is low-frequency ultrasound. So low-frequency ultrasound allows you to diffuse much, much larger drugs, even things the size of proteins, uh, through the skin to particular tissues. And so for that reason, it is more efficient, but some machines will not actually have these parameters that you'll actually be able to use. So you may actually have to use this set over here with 3 megahertz. So the frequency for low-frequency ultrasound is 20 kilohertz. Remember, kilohertz are much less than megahertz. So this is definitely low frequency. Now the intensity is going to be 125 milliwatts per square centimeter. If you're looking at it in terms of watts, this is 0 0.125 watts per square centimeter. And then the duration of this treatment is 5 to 10 minutes, regardless of whether it's low frequency ultrasound or normal non-thermal parameters over here on the right. Okay. 
So let's see how you actually perform the treatment. So over here on the top left, this is actually the ultrasound head. Now remember, you have this surface right here. This is actually what's in contact with the skin. This dark black circle right here, this is really where I want to diffuse the drug, like dexamethasone, for example, for inflammation. Uh, let's suppose here it's the flexor tendons, which might actually have some inflammation right here. That would be a tendonitis of the flexor tendons. So I want to diffuse the drug right here. This larger black circle represents the treatment area where I'm actually going to be moving that ultrasound head. Now, of course, the ultrasound head is going to require gel. So for phonophoresis, that's going to come in one of two types. Okay? You're either going to have a gel that is a combination of the regular ultrasound gel and a drug. In other words, the drug is mixed into the gel, and you'd have to have that on the label. The other case here is where the drug gel and the ultrasound gel are actually separate. So you basically have two separate gels. One's the regular ultrasound gel, the other has the drug in it. Okay? Let's actually consider that case first. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to apply the drug gel directly on the site. So basically, you're going to put that drug gel right here on the skin. And then the second thing I do is I apply that ultrasound gel on the sound head. So I put that right here. Once I have this set up, I'm ready to perform my phonophoresis. So here's my ultrasound head. Remember that two times the ERA down here at the bottom? That ERA is effective radiating area. So that's really the region of the ultrasound head that's actually emitting ultrasound waves. For all intents and purposes, we can really consider it this circle right here, this surface area that's in contact with the skin. Okay? Basically, we want our treatment area to be double that surface area. So notice that the surface area of treatment, this dark black circle, is about double the size of our ultrasound head. That's what two times the ERA actually means. And then remember, what we're going to do is we're going to move this in circles, about one circle every second. Okay, So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth. Now remember, a few rules of this. One, again, is that two times the ERA. We want our treatment area to be about double the size of the ultrasound head, so two times the ERA. Second, we always want to keep this moving. Okay? We never want to leave that ultrasound head on there statically. Okay? We always want to keep the ultrasound head moving. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, in the other case here, if we have a combo gel in the drug, so the drug is actually mixed into the ultrasound gel, well, that makes it simple. We first put that gel on the skin. We then put that gel on the ultrasound head. And then everything else is the same. We basically take that and do those one second circles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth. So what this will do over the course of five to 10 minutes, depending on how long your treatment is, is it will drive that drug transdermally through the skin. Now, this leads to one last important thing. Okay? You cannot use this technique to give a drug to a very deep tissue. Okay? This is only going to penetrate tissues to a max of about five centimeters depth beneath the skin. So if you're trying to get this to the large intestine, you're out of luck. It's not going to work. Uh, but if you wanted to get this to the rotator cuff muscles, those are within five centimeters of the surface of the skin. This would actually work to get a drug to the rotator cuff muscles. Uh, it would work for any other tissue superficial of that as well. Okay. So if we're looking here at those flexor tendons uh, in the forearm, those are certainly uh, within five centimeters. And so phonophoresis would be effective and valid for delivering some drug to those tendons. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of phonophoresis. If you want more detail on therapeutic ultrasound, go back and watch that video. It should be previous to this in the playlist. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.